Here is a CKND news cap. Premier Howard Pauley officially signaled the resumption of construction on the multi-billion dollar limestone hydroelectric project. The $2.1 billion generating station is being built two years ahead of schedule to handle increased export sales to the U.S. Police in Birmingham have arrested 31 people after a second day of violence in the northern British city. Two brothers of Asian descent were killed in rioting yesterday after they were trapped in a burning post office. About 50 shops were gutted, but authorities say confrontations today were more sporadic. Bands of youth pelted police with stones and bottles, smashed windows and set cars and more shops on fire. It's the worst rioting to hit Britain since 1901 when violence raged for two days in London, Liverpool and Manchester. Investment analysts are giving the Calgary-based Northland Bank little chance of survival. Ottawa's announced it will liquidate the bank unless it quickly reorganizes or amalgamates with another, healthier financial institution. But analysts say other banks likely won't get involved because of Northland's doubtful assets. And they say the bank's chances of a successful reorganization on its own are slim. Critics say government moves to assert sovereignty over the Arctic may be too little, too late. External Affairs Minister Joe Clark announced today that Canada will build an icebreaker to patrol the far north and will increase military activity in the area. But Liberal MP Jean Chrétien says any legal case over jurisdiction may be undermined because of Tory inaction. A dispute flared up earlier this summer when a U.S. icebreaker plied the Northwest Passage without Canadian permission. The U.S. ambassador to South Africa has returned there after three months. Herman Nickel says he carries an important message from President Reagan. The ambassador won't reveal the contents of the message, but has told reporters it's very important that the United States dissociate itself from apartheid. A leading South African business paper says U.S. sanctions against the country are more economically inconvenient than terminal. But Business Day warns that Pretoria government that the message is clear, reform or else. And in Luxembourg today, most European community countries followed Washington's lead. All except Britain are withdrawing military attaches to South Africa and halting exports of arms and nuclear technology. I'm Marjorie Salke. This has been a CKND newscap.